So the past couple of Sundays, we have had an emphasis on fasting. In the first part, we talked about how oftentimes we, or at least I can say that I enter into fasting thinking that I want God to do something. Uh, the way that I worded it was thinking that I'm trying to seek the hand of God, but so oftentimes as I actually enter deeper into the practice of fasting, I realize that it is not the hand of God that I'm seeking. It is the face of God that I'm seeking. And oftentimes I'm trying to find God out there or up there somewhere only to realize that God is in here in my midst. And also, as obvious as it might seem, Oftentimes the last thing that I remember as I cease to eat is the, what should be the obvious reminder in reality that there are people without food. And so as we uh, abstain from something and as we uh, get to the point of realizing that we have hunger or, or a need, it's good for us to remember that there are people without, there are people that are lacking food, people that are lacking water, people that are lacking justice. And then last week was an emphasis on Isaiah chapter 58, as well as Matthew chapter 25, the idea of true fasting, realizing that fasting goes way beyond something that we don't do, and it really goes into something that we do. And so Jesus, uh, the teachings of Jesus remind us that when we feed someone who's hungry or we, f or we uh, give water to someone who's thirsty or care for someone who's sick or give clothes to someone who's naked or visit someone who's in prison. Whenever we do that for the least of the sisters and brothers, we are actually engaging with a face-to-faceness with Christ, which kind of circles back to where I started, which is what we really are longing for when we begin fasting. And so this morning is just a brief, brief conclusion of that fasting emphasis through the form of communion. And I want to really tie it in with, and if you get in your car soon, drive to 191 Howard Street, or if you're seeing this after the fact, give us a call and schedule a time to come by and we'll serve you communion. But there, there's something about coming to the Lord's table, this moment that is sometimes called communion or the Eucharist or Mass or the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper. There's something about eating with Jesus or remembering the time that his followers were eating with him, that really when, he, when they were eating with Jesus, Jesus said, whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And now what you have is a very, very, very small part of an extended Passover meal that has carried this idea, whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And we've, we've talked about this so many times in the past, so I don't want to go into all of it this morning, but just a brief reminder that the body of Christ was broken for the world and that as followers of Christ, we are also referred to as the body of Christ. And so just like the body of Christ was broken for the world as his followers and as we lay ourselves down for the people around us, just like Christ and in the way of Christ, the body of Christ is continually broken for the world. And then of course, the blood of Christ shed for the world. And so that's this remembrance of what Christ has done. And on the tail end of an emphasis on fasting, on the tail end of really thinking through what it means to abstain from something and what we really long for in the midst of abstaining from something, and then it leads to us wanting to engage with people and wanting to provide for people, I wanted to remind us this morning of just a, a really brief teaching of Jesus in the midst of a really long sermon of Jesus. And that is when he said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. And so this morning, as you hopefully get in your car here in a few minutes, drive to our office space so that we can have a brief time together of communion or, what, or maybe if you watch this after the fact and maybe you just want to gather the elements in your home or with, with those around you, realizing that maybe what you're really longing for in life, what you're actually hungry for, what you actually need, not just what you want, what you're longing for, hungering for, and thirsting for is the presence of God. This, this righteousness that he talks about is not just trying to do more good than bad. There's righteousness that only comes in and through and from Christ. 
that is what we're longing for. And when we long for righteousness, when we, when we long for, and I've said this before, but I think a good time to bring it up, righteousness being when things are as they should be, when we long for the presence of God, when we long for things to be made right, when we long for broken ways to be made whole, when we long for the valleys to be risen or the high places to be lowered, when the things that are unjust that have been broken to be brought back into the place they should be, when we long for that, the deep thing that we hunger and thirst for will be filled. And so I think... There's something about communion that somehow captures that, at least for me, where I, I enter into saying uh, the, the morning or the day saying, Lord, I hunger and I thirst for you, for your, your righteousness, for your presence, hopefully for, you know, for your face, not just for the hand of what you would give me. And then as we partake of the bread and the wine or, or the juice, we are, we are taking in that which symbolizes and represents, or some traditions would even say becomes the very body and blood of Christ, but we are entering into this practice together that millions of the followers of Jesus around the world have done and continue to do on a regular basis, that we say, Lord, I hunger and I thirst for you and your righteousness, and we partake of the bread and the juice, and when we do that, we remember we collectively and we individually remember. So my sisters and my brothers, if you are watching this on Sunday morning and you are able and have time to get in your car and drive downtown, would you please bring your mask? And let's remember together. Let's remember together and, and see each other, at least part of our faces together, and see uh, the face of Christ as we look into each other's eyes. Let's remember what Christ has done for us. Let's remember who Christ is in us. And as we hunger and we thirst for the things that are broken to be made right, we will be filled, not just with a little wafer and some juice, but that we are filled with Christ himself. So you're invited now. And if, of course, if you're watching this after the fact, we invite you to either partake at home or Please email us, give us, uh, get, send us a message at info at the heart.us and let us know if you would like to come to the office for one of us to um, observe communion with you and offer you the elements. So my sisters and my brothers, may you believe these things about God, but may you also believe these things about yourself. May you believe that Christ's body was broken for the world. The body of Christ was broken for the world. And may you also believe that us as the collective body of Christ is continuing to be broken for the world. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and be gracious to you and turn his face towards you and shine his light on you and grant you with peace. I'll see you soon.